Honeywell controllers seem to be the flavour of the month at the moment. I guess it's just down to the popularity. Here is a faulty one with a common problem they have. And this one was sent by Dr. Pipe. Let's go to work. Uh, but I also got sent another one, uh, a more modern looking one by CJR Electrical. Um, which just apparently stopped working completely. But when I tried it, it was working. But we'll see. We'll investigate that uh, at another time. This is the one that has the issue at the moment. And if I put my hand around so you can see a little indicator lights and the display, you'll see it keeps cutting out and then waking up again. And then after a while, it cuts out again and then wakes up again. It's very rhythmic. But because it's operating the motorised valve, the motorised valve never quite reaches the end and uh, turns the heating on. So when they do this, it basically shuts your heating down. Let's investigate this and see what's causing the problem. So I have already preemptively taken a peek inside and ordered some components just to save time. Uh, some dropper capacitors and some smoothing capacitors because I'm a bit suspicious about the problem in this. I don't think it's a simple uh, capacitor fault, but I might be wrong. So let's see if we can get this open to reveal the circuit board. While you have it open, if you're doing a repair on one of these, you could always swap the lithium battery too, because it's always good to just change them every so often. It's a 2 or 3 2. I don't think this one's flat, but uh, changing it would probably help. <clears throat> Having already investigated the circuitry to get some spare components in, it's based on initially on a capacitive dropper, but it's really unusual. To keep the size of the capacitive dropper down, they've used 48 volt coil relays. I like the way they've put a big 48 to indicate the voltage. And to power them, they're using the capacitive dropper, so it's coming through this resistor here. It's going via the capacitor, bridge rectifier, and then a couple of smoothing capacitors. And those smoothing capacitors, that, I, that took me by surprise. I was just probing about, and the voltage was quite high across those. But then again, it is 48 volt relays. It just means it's much less current to operate them. So what I'm going to do, I went to CPC and ordered some CA07131. That's their stock number in the UK. I ordered a matching capacitor, which is a 680, is it 680? Or is it 820? Trying to, I'm actually trying to read it here. It's very small. 680 nanofarad. So I'm going to pop that in, but if that doesn't fix it, then my next suspect is these capacitors here, because I get the feeling that the symptoms it's showing of that instability are what you'd get when capacitors are drying out, there's too much ripple on the supply line, and uh, it's causing the processor to keep crashing and resetting if it's detecting this at a brownout level. So what I'll do initially, I shall swap this capacitor, and I shall be back in a moment. Uh, actually, you know, we'll start right now. I'll get the solder iron on. And because this circuit board is just a bit trickier to get out, uh, and also because the leads of the capacitor, I could not find one with long legs. Uh, I'm going to have to crop this capacitor off and keep the leads. So I'll cut that out. But while we've got it out, let's bridge the capacitor with a metal screwdriver. Excellent. And stick a meter across. So this is supposed to be 680 nano. And I tried testing it in circuit and it came pretty close to that. So... If it's not too low, it's 620 nano. So it has dropped a bit and that could be affecting it. The new capacitor will boost that up. This, this is a common problem with these. Gradually, the metal film inside degrades and they literally just change in capacitor. See, this one is, that's actually worse. And that's the new capacitor. All right, I'm going to uh, check the other ones and uh, make sure I've not got a shit capacitor. That's, that's kind of disappointing. It might well be in the, the tolerance, but uh, I'm going to rake through these other ones. Okay, no, I said 560, didn't I? I was at, uh, no, what was that? I've forgotten. Hold on, I'm, I'm already screwing this up. Where's my wee magnifying glass? Uh, 680 nano. What have I ordered? 680 nano. Okay, one moment, please.
Okay, continuing on with the original capacitor back in because it's the best of a bad bunch. Those capacitors have a 20% tolerance. They were within that 20% tolerance, but this capacitor actually had better specifications. I tested it with a little universal component tester. It showed that it had the highest capacitance and the same uh, equivalent series resistance. So it is the best choice at this point in time. However, I want to explore and actually see if that really is the problem, because I have a sneaky feeling it's uh, these capacitors here that have failed, and oddly, there are one, two, three, four capacitor positions, and they're all in parallel. And if you look at the back of the controller, there are signs that heat has been prevalent in this area, and that is the kiss of death to electrolytic capacitors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a way to measure ripple. Now, I'm going to plug this in. I have jumpered connection straight onto this, with a capacitive dropper, everything should be treated as being live at full mains voltage. If you ever do anything like this, which I don't really recommend doing, I can't recommend doing it, because uh, unless you're experienced working with electrical stuff, because there is a high shock risk. So let's measure the voltage across those common capacitor connections. So I'll start off with DC voltage. And it is 37 volts. It's supposed to be 48 volts, those relays, but they will come in... So with just one, it's uh, going up to about 42 volts. Now, I'll show you another thing you can do. If you suspect the capacitors are aging and there's ripple, what actually happens is once it's been rectified, it should be ideal DC would be a straight line, but you're always going to get a little bit of ripple on top. But as capacitors get older, that ripple gets deeper. And it, if it goes too deep, it gets to the point it can cause resetting. If you want to measure ripple on a DC line, turn your meter to... 200 volts AC and put it across the DC and it will show you the AC component, a rough indication of the AC component, which in this case is 13 volts ripple, which is actually really high. I'd only expect a few volts ripple. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to unplug this. And these capacitors are quite high voltage. They're 63 volt. I could not find one in this form factor. So temporarily, this is unplugged at the moment, temporarily I'm going to bodge another one over there. I may actually remove one of these capacitors and test it, but initially I'm going to use a standard through hole component. And to put it in, I'm going to have to be careful how I can actually lay this in the circuit board because there's very little room. They've uh, machined the, the housing such that there is very little space in here. It's it's really cutting it to the edge. There's the, the outline of this capacitor in here, and then it goes up to the terminals here. So there really isn't a huge amount of space. None at all, that really. That is dire. So I'm going to have to try. Am I even going to be able to do this? I may have to just go to a different supplier who stocks a wider range of components and see if I can get something similar to that. But initially I will patch this capacitor in and lay it down as flat as possible onto the circuit board and we'll see if we can at least uh, get an indication if this is the problem. So I'm going to pre-tin these leads. In fact, I should just sort it straight on right now, in fact. I get the feeling that they were preemptively allowing for that by having these extra pads, but decided they didn't need them. They just would uh, make do with uh, two capacitors instead of the four. Maybe it's they just discovered they could get the smaller capacitor for me, but, you know, I'm not a huge fan of miniaturization. Okay. Now I'm laying that down suspiciously close to a resistor under here, but this will at least indicate... Uh, if this is going to help, if it's going to cause uh, the unit to be stable now. So I shall plug it in. The relays have powered up, and we'll just hang about for a bit and see if it cuts out again. If it does cut out again, then it's definitely changing this, although I think I'd change this anyway, although it's pretty good. It's not too far off its tolerance. Let's measure... And I don't hear that clicking. I do not hear it clicking. Let's measure the ripple again. So I've got it set to 200 volts AC. I'm just going to probe onto that capacitor lead here. The ripple is almost gone completely. I think those capacitors 
Look at that. Virtually no ripple. I think these capacitors are dry. And that would fit with the staining on the case and making it go brown. I think that's solved the problem. So the answer is to get a couple of these little capacitors or find a way to put this one in. Noting that there is a resistor under there and this is still live. Okay, so at this point in time, I would say that is most likely to have been the problem, the dry electrolytics in that, and that maybe the dropper capacitor wasn't too bad at all. That is staying powered. It's not doing its cycling thing. This is where it does it, just to annoy me. Tell you what, another thing I'm going to do, now I've got proper smoothing there, let's measure the DC voltage across that. It should be somewhere getting up to 45, 48 volts, because that's what those relays kind of need, ideally, for to be powered. And now they're both powered up. That could drop a tiny little bit, but we shall see. This is where I probe very gingerly, because I, I don't want to blow up. Oh, that is so much better. There we go. 46 volts. I think that's it. I think it's dry electrolytics was the problem with that. Right, tell you what. I'll put this video up at the moment as being, I believe, that these capacitors, which are in parallel, are the problem. But I'm going to have to order some. None of my suppliers had them in this form. And they've kind of fitted them in such a small space that maybe I'll just end up having to get 10 microfarad times 4 in a smaller package. It's the fact that 63 volt is the absolute... Uh, destroyer here for fitting them into this and getting that diameter of package and the height but I'm guessing then that uh, if you have a problem with these doing this this is definitely worth changing routinely anyway but change it for a proper 680 nano um, and uh, and change these capacitors or find a way there's just not much space in this case is there Hold on, let's see if that sits down, but to be honest, oh, this is definitely unplugged, Just uh, I just thought I'd mention that. So I'm going to pop these connections off. That capacitor is unfortunately lying across uh, a resistor there, and that's not going to, I'm not, I can't leave it like that for heat reasons. I'll tell you what I could have done. I could have taken this capacitor off and actually put this one down there. Is that going to work? That does stand. More of a chance. There is something that touches against there, but if I laid the capacitor in here, as long as it's sleeved, it might actually work, and especially if it came off here. Uh, but let's stick this on at the moment and just see what happens. It's not quite clicking together because of that capacitor thing, I'm not really sure, maybe it's just crap clips. But um, anyway, at that I'll say I think that's a problem. The little electrolytic capacitors are dry and that is causing too much ripple. The ripple is dipping so low that it's touching the sort of the voltage level of the uh, processor itself and causing it to lose regulation and it's cutting out and crashing. So that's uh, what I think that is, now I shall go and order some components and then we'll fix it properly.